guys, it's July 5th, 2021, and we are on the finishing of Serendipity, and this is our So Along to Benefit Make-A-Wish, and thank you to all of you. We have raised almost $81,000, and Kevin and I are going to donate $20,000, and Mark Dunn of Moda Fabrics is going to donate $10,000, so that's going to be amazing. I'm thinking that we'll be able to grant 11 wishes, and of course, as we grant the wishes, um, some families want uh, to be seen and some just want to show us as a company and not show the world. So as we grant wishes that um, the, the families are comfortable with us sharing, we will share. And then the ones that are not comfortable, we will just keep behind the scenes and you will just know that we are really contributing to a good cause and we are really seeing um, the difference it makes in all of these children's lives. So we're hoping that we're doing something good in the world. And today, I've shown all of the rows behind me and a tutorial on them. And today I'm gonna show you something a little bit different. So I'm gonna move my box. It's um, kinda got all my leftover fabric in it, but I'm gonna move this out of the way really quick. And then I want to show you, we'll zoom in a little bit. Um, what we did here is we wrote the pattern with the fabric. So we wrote it to where you cut your sashing and your borders with the fabric. So the A is the sashings and the B is your borders. And you can see that because we have it labeled. But what I wanted to show you today is I never sew anything with the fabric and sew it together because I don't like to see the seams. That is just a personal preference, something I've done for years and years. I also feel like my borders look better quilted because they're not wavy. So when you have with the fabric, so if you're looking at this fabric, this is the width of fabric. When you touch it, it, it will stretch. Look how much that stretched, quite a bit. Length of fabric does not stretch very much. So I like my borders to have that tightness. Now that means you have to be more accurate when you're piecing because when you're attaching your sashing to your row, there's not going to be a lot of wiggle room for that to stretch. You know, if you're doing with the fabric, you can make it work. Length doesn't work. So I do it that way because I feel like I get a better result. So I'm going to show you today how to do this length of fabric. But if you wanna do it with the fabric, we have written it with the fabric. And over here, I have all of my rows and I have them all ironed and lined up in the order that they are just so that they're kind of, and I'm not gonna piece the whole thing together because that would take probably five hours, but I am gonna show you how to make it work. So we're gonna now zoom out a little bit and in our very first video, we did say how much to cut off here. So I left, I think there's about 15 inches here. And I have all of this folded and ironed so there's no wrinkles. I have the fold on one side and a fold here and a fold up there that's, that's right under this. So when you're cutting, this would also go for with the fabric, but if you need this to open and be straight, when you cut, you need this to be straight and at the top to be straight. And what I did before I started, I put a brand new endurance blade. And so I'm gonna put this as far to the and I'm gonna hold it really tight. Now, because I've got a lot of, there's a lot of layers here, you kind of have to push. And the reason I put an endurance blade in is because when you're cutting through a lot of layers, you really need it to be straight. You don't, when you cut, you don't wanna see it choppy. You don't wanna see waves or anything like that. So now I'm going to rotate without moving as much as possible. And then, when you look in your pattern, it says, piece your fabric A six two by 56. So this is a layer of two, so I need to cut three two inch strips. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do six, four, and two. 
and again you can't really make a mistake at this point because you're this is kind of all you have left so and I'll get to the what you trim it down to in a little bit which I don't actually trim down four and I'll show you that in a minute So I have three two inch length of fabric. Now, if we had done with the fabric, you would have cut nine of those and then you sew them together. I just don't like that seam. So I'm gonna move this aside. And the size that it tells you to cut down to, like right here, we'll get to that in a second. And you'll see that I actually don't trim anything. I mark with pens and go from there. But now we need four two and a half length of fabric strips. And I've got it layered two, so four divided by two is two. So I need to cut two four and a half segments. And so let's see, and this is all starched. Now, one question that I do see is do I cut my binding length of fabric? No. And the reason why is it does not have enough move. It, it is very stiff when you do length of fabric and you really need it to be able to give in the binding. So I do not do binding length of fabric unless it's some kind of stripe or something that I need. Okay, so these I'm gonna set aside and I will I will do the same method to attach my outer borders as I do here. So I'm going to kind of move this off to the side since I don't need it. And I'm going to move these off to the side. So here we need to do, let's see, it says 56 inch strips. So 56 divided by 2 is 23, I think. No, it's not. Let's see, 56 divided by two is 28. So I'm gonna actually use my mat right now, which is something I almost never do, but I only do it when I'm doing borders. So the first thing I'm gonna do is there's a little wrinkle here. I'm gonna iron that out so I get the most accurate measurement. So I'm gonna go off the table and just iron really quick so it's nice and flat. I'm going to use this mat and this is the this is the 28 inch so 28 plus 28 is 56 so I'm going to actually mark at the 28 on all of these And I'll do this on all of mine. So I only use the mat for measurements when I'm doing borders. And then I'm gonna come over here to where the zero was, and I'm gonna put a mark here in both of these, right in the center, and you'll see why in a second. Um, doesn't all the starching change the texture of the fabric? No, starching actually, um, just gives it a stiffness, it does not change the texture. So over here, I don't need this, so I'm gonna cut this off. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna actually move the sewing machine out of the way a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna take my top row, and we're gonna zoom all the way out as far as we can go. And I'm going to look to make sure this is the top left and this is the top right. And we're going to add this. So the first thing I'll do, and of course if you do it upside down, I mean it's, it's not the end of the world. I'm going to fold this, put a little pin in the center. And then 
I'm going to unfold one of these and I'll put the other one to the side. And then I'm going to put a pin in this very center. And then here. I might put two pins in this end. Go all the way over here. Oh, it just, it just took it off the center. It just, I didn't pin all the way through. It's okay, I'll make it work. So pin at this end, and you just need to pin all the way through, but you need it to be nice and flat. So I'm gonna pull. Oh yeah, there's the center right there. And I'm just gonna pin this to where it, like if you pull, it just evens it out. And the more pins you put, the better. And when you're looking at a pattern, you always want to make sure that whatever the row is supposed to be, that you make the sashing the same amount. And so you're going to have a little bit of, you know, because you've got seams here, it's going to be a little bit smaller. You just kind of work it in. And I would never attach borders or sashing without measuring ever. Now, if it was like a small table runner, that's like 18 inches or something, or a pillow, I might, but a quilt, I definitely wouldn't because I wouldn't trust my, I wouldn't trust it to come out the right way. And you just work it in by just pulling. And when I sew borders down or sashing, I always sew with that side on the top. So let's see how the sewing machine looks. That's good. So from here, I, again, don't trim this off either side. I'm gonna start sewing over here before you get to the actual fabric, like to the actual row. And I'm gonna sew, and I'm actually gonna backstitch. And I only do that when I'm attaching borders, sashing, stuff like that. And I don't think you're supposed to, it's just something that I, I do. And I'm stitching with 2600, which is a light gray RFL. And I do prefer to do my borders to sew really fast. So I'm gonna do it the way that I do and not talk. But I do kind of play with the seams underneath to make sure they don't flip. So that is how I do my borders, but I do find that if I sew really slow as I'm going, and you can see my points match even though I didn't see, even though I didn't look, if I go really slow when I'm adding a border or a sashing for some reason, it gets crooked. I have no idea why, that doesn't make sense, but the faster I go, the more even it stays. And I don't know why that is, but I just find that I have better results that way. Now, at this point, my points match. But if they don't, at this point, I let it go. This is where if, I'm trying to find one that doesn't match. But if I had one that didn't match up, 
I would just let it go because I don't want anything wavy at this point. So I don't even, it doesn't matter if they match up. These just happen to. But if they didn't, I wouldn't look at that. Now here, I'm just gonna make sure on the back, none of my seams moved the wrong way and they didn't. And that's because when I was going, I was kind of feeling them to keep them going this, the right way. But if any of these are kind of crooked like that, you can decide at that point if you wanna fix it or not. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Kind of depends what kind of mood I'm in. Um, but here, now we're going to press before we do anything. And this is the most important part of your quilt to press and set your seams. Because if you just press like that, I guarantee you're gonna have waves. If you set your seam, you're gonna get better results. So if you're in doing a block and you don't have that much time to set your seam, at least set it when you're doing your borders. So, it's gonna be much harder to do this here because it's not a very big spot, but I'm going to, let's see, set my seam. And I'm gonna do it really nice, I mean, I'm not gonna do it fast because I really want that nice look when I press toward the other side. And I'm actually going to go all the way across before I press to one side. And you can see I'm kind of pulling it because it's, I'm setting that seam flat. And you can see before it was wavy, look how flat it is. See how that's wavy? If you just press to one side, it's still gonna be wavy. Pull it, it's gonna set it. And um, someone is asking what weight of thread do I use for binding? I use 50 weight for all of it. When my, I send my quilt to be quilted, what thread do I recommend? So I'm actually super picky about thread. And I, um, my quilters kind of just know what I like. I do not like my thread to show. And um, you just let your quilter decide. Now they don't use Aurifil when they quilt. They use different things like King Tut or Superior. They use a different thread. So you can ask them to send photos of it. I just don't ever like my quilting to show. I like my quilting to be the, um, like backup dancer, not the dancer. So now I'm going to just, yeah, and I'm super picky about quilting and I can actually tell. If we go to our um, um, like cabinet of quilts, I can tell if it's my quilt or not because I'm very particular about what I like and most people who work here don't like the way I like it. And that's what's great about it. That's what's great about quilting. You do whatever you like. Um, but yeah, I'm very particular about pantographs. Um, it was funny, one day Gina posted and said, yeah, Kim doesn't like leaves on their pantograph, and I don't, I, I can't stand them. I don't know why, it's such a weird thing to not like. Um, and then um, someone's asking if I use steam. So I use steam, but I have pre-starch, so that's already shrunk all my fabric. And here, one thing you wanna make sure the camera's wigging out on us today, is right here, it needs to be flat. Ooh, that's hot. Like flat. I'm gonna actually try, I'm gonna get the iron out of my way and show you what I mean. If it's not flat, like for example, if you iron it like that and it gets quilted, you're, you'd be able to put your finger under that. So that, that drives me crazy when I see quilts like that. Um, I use a big, large ironing surface when I do my quilts at home. I have, it's kind of like a big board. So now, once I have the first one, the first, this is row one, we're gonna add row two here. I'm going to cut now. So I'm going to line up the ruler here and cut. Um, crafting a plan life is asking how much for each of the wishes. So it just depends. Um, each, the wishes have changed um, because you can't go to Disney anymore. They're not accepting the wishes quite yet. Um, 
So it just depends. Okay, so here you can see how that went. Whoop. I have no idea why. Chop that off, it's fine. That was probably just, it'll be fine. And then thank you to Valeria Bauer for the super chat. She's always in there. And oh my gosh, I got to see a picture of her. So I always wondered what Valeria looked like and she posted on Kimberly Swift Squad and I was so excited. So now I know what you look like when you talk to me. Okay, so here I'm gonna do the same thing. Fold it in half. This time I'm gonna hope my pin, hope I do it right. Put my pin here in the center. Now I know some people who will even do fourths and mark, that's too much for me. But you could do that if, you, if you're struggling to get it to work. So I'm gonna lay that out here and I'm gonna pull row two. Now row two, it does, it's not gonna match exactly y'all's because I made this one wrong, but in the end it doesn't matter. So, so here it's gonna be added right here. So what I'll do is fold this in half. So yeah, just pay don't pay attention to my fabrics because I, I went off a little bit. I think I've got it going the right way. And then here we're gonna add this to this. And when I'm doing the quilt, because I'm just gonna show these three rows, what I'll do is I'll sew all the way to here and stop. And then I'll do all this as one section. And then I'll add the two sections together. So I'll kinda, I'll just keep adding until it gets too big or too bulky, stop, do the bottom, put the two together, because if you're doing all the way down, you're gonna have so much heaviness when you add this. So I just break it up into little sections. Or you could do these two, these two, these two, these two, these two, these two. These two. You can do it however, you, however works best for you. That's just kinda how I do it. Now from here, I'm gonna put these together and hope that I get this pinned together. I don't know what I was doing earlier. And I am gonna flip it over once I get it, the first pins in. And I do try to pin right there. And this one's fitting together really nice. I can tell there's not very many, there's not very many bumps. Now here, because I do not like to sew with this on top. Now some people do and that's okay. I just find that I get the worst results. Who knows why? Everybody's different. So I'm gonna flip it over with the sashing side up pin. And it's gonna be kind of difficult because this is wider than this. So sometimes it can be difficult. But what I try to do is just ease it in. It's just the weight is off a little bit. It's, it's hard to, there you go. And then you kind of just get it and then you just get it nice and lined up and then just pin. And this one's actually lining up really good. It's not as wavy as the other one was. And you're gonna find that sometimes some of your rows are gonna be shorter and longer, but by doing it this way and cutting it the right size. So if I'm reading someone's pattern and it doesn't tell me what it's supposed to be, I will do the math to make sure I've got the right amount. So let me know if you have any questions on anything. Um, I would do the same thing if you were doing with the fabric, but with with the fabric, you'll just have a seam in here, but if you would do the same exact technique. And it takes a little bit to get it to be lined up. But see, you wouldn't want to pin just like that because see how that blue's picking out, peeking out? You really want it to be nice and flat. Like really, you really want the two fabrics to really be right next to each other. And then um, someone's asking my stitch length. I use the same stitch length when I attach my borders that I do when I'm stitching my block. So whatever size you do there, that's what I would do. This one's not wanting to come down, but I do take my time pinning. And um, you could like pin all of them at one time if you don't, I usually will run out of pins, so I can't do all of them at one time. 
So I guess my pins are about every two inches maybe. I hope all of you guys had a nice July 4th. Let's see. Okay, so night. Okay, now here I'm going to kind of fold it just so that when I'm sewing, now it's hard because I'm standing up, but if I was at home, it would kind of go in my lap like this so that my pins don't just go everywhere. Like if you just drop this in your lap, pins will just start going all over everywhere. So I kind of roll it up a little bit and I'm going to do that same exact thing where I go real fast. Okay. Yay, I got it in the right spot. Okay, so it's a little bit hard here because there's so much weight. I don't want that weight pulling on it. So I'm actually gonna move my machine here so that I can just put my fabric here and it's not falling down. And again, I'm gonna go really fast and the reason why is I get better results. I am gonna backstitch at the beginning and the end. Okay, so right here, it's kind of, I can see that little navy coming through, so you don't want, you don't want that, so I'll stop and reposition. Okay, so now we can move this off the table. And then we're going to just do the same thing. Because it's the same technique throughout. So here, I'm not gonna iron with this side up. I prefer to iron with the sashing side up. Same thing as when I do the border. And like I said, everything is always personal preference. So don't worry if you don't do it the same way as me. And I want it to be nice and flat, so I'm gonna go nice and slow when I'm ironing here. Do I use a so, so steady table at home? Yes, but I have some cabinets where it insets in, so it's just flush with the table, but the little plastic insert is made by So Steady. I see Kimberly has switched to the new little house pins. They're amazingly thin and closest to Collins pins. What's my opinion? I love them. I switched all my pins at home. Um, do I back tack at the start and stop? Yes, I back stitch. I don't do a tacking stitch. I do a back stitch at the front and the end. And that is just because I feel like there's going to be a lot of pressure there. That's going to be your most pressure points. Do I use a knee lift at home? Absolutely. I can't imagine if I tried doing that at home. I mean, tried doing that standing up, though. I might fall over. I don't need to fall over, right? And what's nice here is you can see that it naturally goes there and then now if you just like see if you iron there you could put your finger in it that drives me crazy so I'm gonna make it nice and flat and just go right over that seam and hopefully all my little flying geese will have points that match we'll see
if I stand the pin holder sideways, you can swipe and the magnet will catch them at the same time. Oh, that's a good idea. I probably sew so fast that it would probably go from sideways to... So even though it was kind of wavy, you know, when you join it, if you do it this way, it will work. And you get really pretty results. I love this background. I haven't really done a quilt in a long time with a darker background. It's really nice. It's nice to like change the colors up. Um, I had to replace my rotary blader and I wasn't sure what to do with the old one. So I put it in an old package and if I have a package of 10, which is what I used to use before I did endurance, I would just have a little section that was all my old blades went into. Um, I just put them in the plastic container, tape them up when I put them in the trash can and that's all I do. I don't know if you can recycle them. So this is how it looks and you just keep building you just keep adding and um, that is what I have for today um, kind of the back this is how the back looks um, I did want to show you one more thing now see all these little um, threads sometimes it kind of depends what kind of mood I'm in sometimes I'll clip those off and sometimes I will leave them but when you get to that point, you probably shouldn't have them. So that's probably something that would drive me crazy and I would probably um, take those little things off. And sometimes, oh, this is a good thing to show. Sometimes you'll see little, little pieces like this come through. You're gonna see it on darker fabric more because it just shows up, you just pull them. Let's see. And then I see a couple of other little And um, so I'll do the same thing. Now, when I get to my borders, I will do the same thing, except I will use the measurement here, like 66 and a half. I'll measure the, 60, the 66 and a half divided by two, which is 33 and a quarter. I'll lay it out on my mat, put the pins just like I did, add the sides, stop, iron, and add the borders. Um, so let me see, I want to show you one more thing. I got some emails this weekend that I wanted to cover. I had showed the Liberty box. Now I am afraid it's gonna sh sell out, but I'm gonna show you anyway before the live stream ends. We got some questions. They didn't understand how to add this. So um, what you do is you just put, um, you just stick it in there so it's in the binding. And you can either put Made in the USA on one side or you can put a quilt block on one side. And so this would even work with a Bonnie and Camille fabric or Lori Holt fabric. It doesn't have to be Americana, but I wanted to kind of show that because I did get some questions um, over the weekend because they were like, well, I don't really understand what to do with it. So super easy. We just actually did this this morning. And I wanted to give a thank you to Sharon Colburn for being a new member. Um, I wanna thank all of you for watching. And if you have not donated to Make-A-Wish yet, I would totally appreciate that. Kevin would also. I hope you have a great week. I hope you have a great holiday today if you have today off. And I will see you on Friday.